Welcome to episode three of Print All the Things. This is my podcast where I talk about the week's activities in 3D printing, both for myself and in the industry. Right now, there isn't there isn't that much news going on uh, that I want to report on today, but it is going to be accumulating. But there are going to be times that I'm going to miss some of these things. So if you want to submit any kind of things that are print related or 3D print related, you can hit me up on Twitter. Probably the best way, just hit me up on twitter.com slash buona. Send me a DM on there, or you can join our Discord at discord.gg slash Buona, and uh, just send me a message on there. Uh, I'm also on all over other social medias, but those two will probably work the best. So if you're like, hey, Buona, did you check out this story about this new printer or this new nozzle, this new filament? Uh, just hit me up, and I'll talk about it. This week, let's talk about what's on the printer. I got a ton to talk about. I did quite a bit of printing. A lot of little things, but a lot of little printing. A lot of a lot of printing and I don't want to go too long. Uh, the first thing is I printed pot boy from, uh, the game Elden ring. And it's an actual pot with arms and legs. And I, when I printed this, I had no idea what this character was or what he did or anything. I just know that the community absolutely adored and loved this guy. And I was like, okay, I guess I have to print this thing as well as all the things. And it came out pretty well. I did it in the uh, printed solid Jesse PLA Mixtape 14, a.k.a. the Neon Brown. We printed it in that. And uh, it actually came out better than I thought because the arms and legs were a little bit scrawny. So I put supports on it. And I was a little bit worried that when I was... I tend to be forceful when I remove supports. I'm not very gentle. Uh, I try to be gentle, but then when I have to use force, I go too far. And then I just go... Rrr! And then I Hulk smash it. So I was a little bit worried about the arms and legs breaking off, but they actually were held up intact and they came out really well. So I'm going to end up printing this again, probably a little bit bigger because I printed it, uh, I believe, at 50% size. It's a very pretty small size. So I'm going to print it bigger. And when you print bigger, the, the, the supports are definitely going to be easier to come off. Um, now that I've actually played the game Elden Ring, I know who the character is and I know why people love it. He's very adorable. And it's easy to like him. So they made him a likable character. So it's great that I can print that model. The next thing that was on the printer was a very fun print by my good friend Wexter. Go to patreon.com slash Wexter. Sign up. Get the man money. He's great. Wexter did a remix of Cad Bane. Last episode, we talked about Cad Bane. And it was hilarious. Wexter was like, when I was designing and I was building Cad Bane, I, I I was like, man, this guy reminds me of Squidward from SpongeBob. So I made that. Enter Cad Squidward. It's basically Squidward as Cad Bane. He's got the hat. He's got the breathing apparatus. And he's got the SpongeBob. He's got the, the Squidward nose to boot. Very fun print. Um, Wexter provided the model in two different ways. He has a full model. And you can also print the body with the hat and nose separate. Uh, otherwise, those two will require quite a bit of supports. Well, the nose won't, but the, the hat will. So I, I printed this one very similar to where I pin, printed Cad Bane. I did the hat separate. Uh, I also did the nose separate too. And um, we printed this in a Jesse PLA uh, from Printed Solid. Red Ice. This is a filament that I just got not too long ago. I want to try out a red glitter kind of a, a glitter filament and it's got little sparkles of glitter in it you can kind of see them and uh, it's very bright when i take pictures of it it's, it's bright in person but when the light reflects off of it it just it looks like lava it's, it glows pretty well so i tried that in the jesse pla uh white or uh, red ice and uh, i definitely want to print that again probably in a neutral color uh most probably most likely going to be one of the the polyterra or a polymaker polyterra colors could be the black could be the, the gray uh so we can see a little bit more of the detail of the model but this is a very bright color this red ice let me tell you um so that was a very fun print very fun very lighthearted, and it made me smile when i did it next one uh we went over to eastman and uh we printed um Patreon.com slash Eastman. If you don't know about Eastman, he's a great modeler. We printed Black Widow. This was a model that he made a while ago. And I had seen it, but I had never printed it. And uh, I decided that I wanted to try it out. It's basically her with two guns. 
one in her left hand and one in the right. She's turning around looking behind her as if you're sneaking up on her. And, you know, you can't sneak up on Black Widow from the Avengers, right? This one is scaled 50%. And I also printed this in the printed solid Jesse PLA Red Ice uh, as a test print, 50%. Um, and it came out really well. It has multiple parts. Uh, you have her body. You've got one of her hands, the hands with the, the hand with the gun pointed down that you can print, as well as the base. So I did that. I printed the body first, which was a very easy print. I think I just had to add uh, support on her elbow, and that was it. And um, I printed the her uh, detachable hand, the other hand, uh, pointing upward, and it had some uh, supports on that, and they were very easy to come off. Even, even at 50% scale, which is smaller than it should be, uh, the supports were easy to come off, and obviously the base was just pretty much your, your, your average thing. Um, and it came out really well. came out really, really well. And I was happy with it. So um, I don't know if I'm going to add that to my shop or not. Because uh, it is a good model. But I don't know how much interest there is in Black Widow now. I think the hype for her kind of died down after her Netflix series ended. And uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. It's, it's a good model, though. It's, I, like, I like Eastman's take on these models. Like his Black Widow, his Harley Quinn, his Punisher, his Thor... A lot of his heroes, they don't look exactly like what you see in MCU or they don't look exactly like what you see in, in Marvel. But Eastman puts his own spin on them. So he gives them his own flavor. And I think it looks good because it kind of reminds me what different artists do to the comic or to the characters in comic books. They add their own art style to it. So Eastman does a very similar thing. Because if you see this Black Widow, she doesn't look like Scarlett Johansson at all, which is fine by me, I, you know, because my my visual of Black Widow is not Scarlett Johansson. It's what was in the comics because that's what I grew up with. Uh, most people who haven't read the comic books of a lot of these characters that get 3D printed don't, they don't have any kind of representation of what they look like other than what the movies show. So I think that's why some of those, those ones of Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans and however, whatever the other people's names are from the, from the MCU, people identify with those a little bit better. If you didn't read the comics growing up or even watch cartoons, because even the cartoon versions were uh, different. So that was Black Widow. Good model. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to print another one, though. The next one, Trisection of a Cube. Trisection of a Cube. And this one is very fun. Let me tell you, because it's one part that you print three times and it forms a cube. And it's very, very cool. And you can do three different colors. You can do two colors. You can do one color. And there's two variants of it. The first variant is a, a normal tolerance where, you know, it's kind of tight. And when you put all the three parts together as a cube, it kind of snaps together. And you might, don't necessarily have to glue it together. The other variant is a, uh, is a very uh, high tolerance model where there's a lot bigger gaps in between. So if you're using a bigger nozzle or you, you're using a printer that, uh, needs a high tolerance uh, uh, between the parts, then uh, there's a high tolerance one. And that one is the one I printed because I wasn't sure which one I needed. So I printed the one with a lot of space in it. Sure enough, it fits, but it doesn't stay together. It, it falls apart unless I glue it. So I'm going to print this one again, definitely. I showed this to my wife. She absolutely loved it. We did it in three colors. We did it in the uh, cyan, um, the the uh, poly maker. Polyterra Cyan. We also use the neon. Was it the neon? No, it wasn't the neon. We did the black. It's on the table here. Hold on. Where is it at? You guys are seeing pictures of it. Okay. We did black, neon, and red. You guys are seeing pictures, but I don't have it here in front of me. Uh, we did the black, neon, and the red eyes. So we used the red eyes from Printed Solid. We used the uh, uh, Poly Maker Polyterra PLA Plus black and we also use the polyterra pla uh uh cyan so cyan black and red ice the red uh those three colors which are not colors you would probably you know come up with in your, in your head but they actually work together pretty well and uh this is a if you get some really bright colors much like when you do with uh with the the buckets with the uh, paint buckets that we printed uh i don't know if i even talked about those I have to check. I don't even know if I told you guys about those, but we did print some of the uh, the drippy buckets. Uh, the bright colors really, really stand out. They do. So if you have like a neon green, if you have like a yellow or a white or 
something that's really bright, this trisection of a cube will make it make them shine. I think it's it's a it's a very good thing. Requires no supports. It's a very easy print. You just print the same part three times. So if you want to do three different colors, just use three different filaments. Easy print. Easy to impress and really easy on the eyes. Just easy, easy, easy all around. So that's the tri section of a cube available on prusaprinters.org. I'll put the link in the show description. I don't remember the author's name, but I will definitely give them credit in the show notes and you can check them out there. Uh, same with Pop Boy. I forgot to mention that. I don't have the author's name, but I'll put the link of Pop Boy in the show description. Okay. The next things that we printed were all all Wexter. So we went on a Wexter mini kick during my uh, subathon on my live stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. Um, and I printed some mini Star Trek ships. We did the Enterprise in cyan, the Polymaker Polyterra cyan color. And we also did a Klingon D7 model in the printed solid Jesse PLA red ice. Uh, and they came out well. Both of them require supports. I was a little bit worried about it because they're they're so small, and small prints with lots of supports, you know, gets me a little worried because I I, I haven't told the story in a while. But one of the first things I tried to print was the swordfish from Cowboy Bebop, and uh, this was on my Prusa Mini, the very first printer I got last March. It's been a year, and it it has a lot of like pointy pieces, like 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 antennas and stuff. And it had a lot of supports, a ton of supports. And to this day, I get flashbacks of try. I, I think I spent like an hour and a half trying to take all the supports off and it was destroying my hands. And I just hated the whole process, but I did it wrong. You know, I was brand new. The support settings were bad. The support placements were exceedingly over the top. I think I did supports everywhere. And uh, it was a it was a lesson learned on on doing supports right. But whenever I do ships, small ships, spaceships, with a lot of supports, I always get flashbacks of that story of that of the swordfish, the ship from Cowboy Bebop, Spike ship. And I love that ship. And I you know what? I haven't printed it since. I haven't printed that thing since because <laughs> of that incident. It was it, it it really messed me up, man. Because I'm telling you, I was cutting my hands and. Oh gosh, I, I almost like stabbed myself with my my flat cutters, and oh gosh, it was so small too. The the ship was only like maybe four inches tall. Like I I printed it really small. I didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. Um, not even four inches. It was more like three inches. Now that I think about it, it was like three inches tall. Uh, uh standing up, and it was just oh man. Okay, so we printed those two ships, two minis from uh, Wexter that are on PushaPrinters.org. So I'll give you the links to that. Uh, the next things that I printed from Wexter were a bunch of his minis, his normal minis, which are only available on his Patreon at patreon.com slash Wexter. I printed the mini Stormtrooper. Again, I printed so many of these. I think I got about 10 now, 10 or 20, and I want more. I want 50. I want 100. I can't get enough of these mini Stormtroopers. I printed that also in the Jesse PLA from printed solid, uh, the red ice. I did that one as well, just to test it out because it's a filament I hadn't tried before. And uh, we did the <laughs> mini stormtrooper. We also went back to uh, to Mandalorian um, because I had printed these before, but I don't think I printed that many of the Grogu's. I printed Mandalorian mini and Grogu in a very special filament. I really like this filament. This is the Polymaker Polyterra PLA Plus. Now, it's different from the normal Polyterra. The normal Polyterra is a matte finish. This is a glossy finish. So this is a new filament that was recently added a few months ago from Polymaker. And uh, it has a glossy finish to it. And it's black. So I, I'm, I'm also, I didn't get a chance to do it, but I'm also going to print Darth Vader in it. And it, it has a very good look to it. It's not like a galaxy black or a, uh, like a silky black, but it's like almost there. It's like an in-between. And I'm a big fan of it. So I've been ordering from Polymaker. Uh, I've been ordering their PLA Plus in both gray and in um, and in black. Now, uh, it's very similar. Okay, so I had to cut there a little bit. Uh, we're talking about the minis and the stormtroopers and stuff. Uh, it, it reminds me, the filament reminds me of... Uh, it, it, it's... What was I even talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't remember the last point. Uh, Grogu uh, and Mando, we have those uh, 
we have those minis there. So what happened was my camera here, I have a Sony a6100. It overheats after about 30 to 40 minutes of recording. So I try to keep my shows under 30 minutes anyway, but in this case, <laughs> I went over. So it kind of overheated and shut off and there's no way around it. It's, it's baked into the camera. So it's one of my pet peeves. They do that to protect the camera hardware because they don't want it to overheat. Um, but yeah, so the minis from Wexter, Stormtrooper, Grogu, and Mando, we are going to print Vader in that. Okay, so now let's talk about the filaments that I used. Uh, I've already make, I've already talked about them all, but we're going to talk about them again. We used two printed solid filaments, uh, Jesse PLA Mixtape 14, which I got in the uh, monthly box, and also Jesse PLA Red Ice, which I ordered alongside another... Uh, um, another spool of gunmetal gray. That's what I was talking about. That the, the, uh, the PLA plus gray reminds me of the gunmetal gray a little bit in terms of sheen. The gunmetal gray has a little bit less sheen and is a little bit darker, but the PLA plus gray from print, uh, from Polymaker reminds me of that. So I can kind of interchange them almost and people can barely tell. Uh, so those are the two printed solids that we use. Uh, Mixtape 14, I'm almost out of. Uh, and I don't plan to buy any more of that. That was a very cool neon brown, but I don't plan to buy any more of it. Uh, red ice, I'm not sure about. Uh, I'm going to be trying some other reds from the next company that I want to talk about, which is Polymaker. Polymaker, we have the PLA Plus Black and the Polyterra Cyan that we both use for, we use those for the uh, Star Trek stuff and for the Cube and uh, all the minis and stuff. And we got compliments on how the black looked because it was really good. Now, now we're talking about Polymaker. I want, I got a very exciting announcement to make that I am now sponsored by Polymaker on this show. So you're going to see a Polymaker logo on this show. And also we're going to be doing giveaways. That's right. Giveaways of Polymaker filament. So tune in to my live show on Saturdays. Every Saturday, what we're going to do is that we're going to give away filament as part of this show. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a keyword here that you're going to have to type in on the show. I'm not going to mention it on, on, on the live show, but if you watch the podcast and you know the keyword, that you can enter the giveaway on my Saturday stream. And the keyword is going to be Grogu, G-R-O-G-U. So when you come in my stream uh, on Saturday, I'm going to start the giveaway as soon as the stream starts. Uh, so if you come in my stream on Saturday, you type in the word Grogu, you'll be entered in, into the giveaway. You don't even have to stay. If you enter into the giveaway, I will contact you on Twitch. I will send you a message on Twitch if you win, and I will tell you that you won, and I'll request information that we can get it all shipped to you. That's all you have to do. The keyword is Grogu. The keyword is Grogu. Okay, so we're going to be using that keyword on our Saturday stream, this Saturday, coming up, not next Saturday, because next week's show will have another keyword that you'll have to watch for or listen for on the show. And uh, the keyword is going to be Grogu. You have to type that in my chat once the giveaway starts. And that giveaway is going to start. I want to reiterate, the giveaway is going to start when my stream starts each Saturday. I'm going to start it as soon as the stream starts, okay? So thank you, Polymaker, for being a sponsor. We're going to be doing some exciting things with them. We're going to be doing filament giveaways to start, but... Uh, I've got some other stuff lined up that's going to be really cool. If you if you watch any of the shows on here, Polymaker is at the center and forefront of everything. Um, I always use their filament. They're the primary filament that I use over at BuanaLabs.com. I've been using them for oh, almost the entire year that I've been uh, been 3D printing. And I can't say enough good things about them. I primarily use the Polyterra line, but I do use Polylite as well. I have tried Polylite and I plan to try some of the other lines of Polyterra fill or Polymaker, Polymaker filament. So thank you again, Polymaker for being an awesome sponsor of this podcast. And, uh, we're going to make it, we're going to make it a lot of fun. So show up to my stream on Saturday, type in the keyword. Today's key, that keyword is going to be Grogu, G R O G U type that in. As soon as you come into the stream and, uh, if if the giveaways already happened, I'll let you know. But it should pretty much run the entire stream. The stream does start. I guess this is an important thing. Generally, my stream starts at 6 p.m. Eastern uh, on Saturdays. So if you come by and you can make it around 6 p.m. Eastern, type in Grogu if I'm live. Make sure I'm live and you'll be entered into the giveaway. We're going to try it this way. If this doesn't work, we'll do something else next week. 
But I think this is a fun way to get you guys to listen, you know, get the, get the fun little keyword from the podcast and then apply that over on the live stream where we'll actually do the giveaway. We'll try this and we'll try some other methods as well. But I think this will be a lot of fun. I think this will be a lot of fun. So, yeah, Poly Maker sponsor on print all the things. Thank you so much, Poly Maker. That concludes this week's episode of Print All the Things, episode three. I want to thank you all for coming by. I knew I was going to go a little bit long because there was a lot of things to print, and I'm a talkative individual. I like to talk. So uh, thank you so much for listening to the show and watching the show. And I'll see you all next week for another exciting episode of Print All the Things. Take care and have a great day. And remember, print all the things. Bye.